In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. we will go unto the altar of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may willingly participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of conscience. And now let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He prefers her for his dwelling, my resting place forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for your Son Jesus multiplied bread for the poor. Help us who are nourished with the life of your Son. Understand that we, like the apostles, must share our material goods with our brethren. We ask this through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let us pray. O merciful Father, as we observe the anniversary of the passing of our brother, Thomas Corber, into eternal rest, we ask for your grace and blessing. Accept him into your eternal kingdom and bring us the consolation of always trusting in your care. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. On this, the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we take the first reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal, Shalasha, bringing to Elisha, the man of God, twenty barley loaves made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the ear. Elisha said, Give it to the people to eat. 
But his servant objected, How can I set this before a hundred people? Elisha insisted, Give it to the people to eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat, and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there were some left over, as the Lord had said. The word of the Lord. The gradual. For the Lamb who is in the center of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to the springs of life-giving water. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner of, for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of food and drink, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen.
May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Nick Venture Pophelonius is Christus. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. In today's Gospel, we read the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 plus, who gathered to hear the words of Jesus, the Christos, the Anointed One of God. This feeding is the only miracle of Jesus found in all four Gospel accounts. Now the feeding of the multitudes of bread and fish, as we mentioned in today's Gospel, is not the only time that a mass feeding took place. We find a second reference to a mass feeding of 4,000, which is only recorded in Matthew and Mark, not in Luke nor John. During this past week's celebration of Holy Mass, we read from the common lectionary from the book of Exodus of the story of Moses called by God to be the deliverer of the children of Israel from the bondage of the Pharaoh and the Egyptians. It is believed that Moses led out of Egypt over 600,000 people now, understand that all these people left Egypt in a hurry. They did not even have time to leaven their bread. This is why at the celebration of the Jewish Passover, or Seder, unleavened bread is used. That is the same reason that we have unleavened bread, known as the Holy Eucharist. Now, Moses had a liturgical, I'm sorry, Moses had a logistical nightmare. All these people were quickly running out of their supplies. The first crisis was that they were running out of water. In the wilderness and in the desert, things got hot very quickly. They complained and complained. In the book of Numbers, chapter 20, verse 11, we read, Then Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock twice with his staff, and water came forth abundantly, and the congregation and the beasts drank. God was to provide water for their survival. Now there was a matter of food. They were hungry. They complained and even talked about the food that they had and ate as they were slaves in Egypt. God told Moses that he would rain down bread from heaven. The next morning after the dew evaporated, the ground was covered in a white substance which was described as a wafer that tasted like honey. God instructed Moses that they were to collect two quarts of this manna for each person, each day for six days, and double for that Sunday. Again, God was to provide them with food for their survival. Now, I did a little bit of a calculation. Each person was to receive two quarts. Now, a quart in dry measure is approximately one sixteenth of a bushel. Now, if you take 1,200 quarts per person, Every single day, they collected 75,000 bushels of manna. A lot, but yet the Lord again provided for their needs and for their survival. In the sixth chapter of the Gospel, according to St. John, we read of Jesus again feeding the 5,000. Afterward, Jesus reminds his listeners of the manna which came down from heaven. He reminds them that God provided them not only with their physical needs, their daily bread, but that God had provided also for them their spiritual needs, the bread for their souls. Now Jesus in John chapter 6 verse 35 speaks of himself 
as the bread of life. Again, another great I am. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Jesus also reminds them that their forefathers ate of this manna and died. But Jesus declares in John 6, chapter 6, verse 51, he says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. You know, the gospel of Jesus reminds us that we need to turn to God, not only for our physical needs, but most importantly, our spiritual needs. In John chapter 6, verse 27, we read, And Jesus answered them and said, Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, today's message is for each of us to look to God, to trust in God, and to have faith in the providence of God. In Matthew 6, verses 31 through 34, Jesus is on the mount giving his great oratory. And we read, and Jesus answered them and said, Do not work for that food that perishes. Again, today's message is reflected in the words of Jesus where he says, So do not worry and say, What are we to eat? Or what are we to drink? Or what are we to wear? All these things the pagans seek. But your heavenly Father knows that you have need of them all. But first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient for a day is its own evil. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, when we say the Lord's Prayer and we pray, give us this day our daily bread, we are asking for God to provide his grace is for us. And when we receive the Holy Eucharist at the table of the Lord, we are reminded of not only the Last Supper of Jesus, who spent that Passover with his disciples, but we are also reminded that it is God's providence by which all things will be added to us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray, O Heavenly Father, accept in this sacrifice of your Son our gifts of bread and wine. Unite us around your altar that we may live a life worthy of your calling, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Through Christ our Lord, we pray this day. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, accept these gifts we offer to you in faith and trust. May this offering unite us with your Son's offering on the cross, which brings us eternal life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, of announcing the coming of your kingdom, Christ called his disciples 
and began his sacred ministry. Empowered by your grace and strength, may we faithfully fulfill the ministry that you have entrusted to our care. Therefore, we join with the voices of angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray this day. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to accept, to bless and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through live to all who believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, to draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, 
in remembrance of this Christ our Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension. We, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servant Thomas, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who risk in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for their name, your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, is also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, supported by the help of your mercy. May we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give unto you. Do not look at our sins, but upon the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world by your holy body and blood. Free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. Who lives and reigns, God, forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament through your loving kindness, may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us, living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. My brothers and sisters, let us now offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall we return unto the Lord? For all the graces re rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation. And I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him. And I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Lord.
I will nourish you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of your love which comes to us in the sacred meal, teach us to live as you would have us live, so that we may find you in our midst, where it pleases you to dwell. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Let us pray, O merciful God, through this Holy Eucharist, we are reminded with our Lord Jesus, who rose from the dead. May our brother Thomas, whose anniversary of death we honor, be joined with you in the new Jerusalem. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten, not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word. He gave flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. 
Thanks be to God. safety of our congregants. I bring to mind that following this morning's meeting, we are scheduled to have a monthly meeting of the parish committee, and the bulk of our meeting will actually be concerning an upcoming chicken barbecue that we have scheduled for September 19th. So if you have the opportunity, please come and share uh, your thoughts and ideas, and I will also share with you of updates that I have received within this past couple of weeks. Um, anything else to, to announce? No? Okay. So uh, then, yes? Debbie's birthday was yesterday. Debbie? 23, 24? <laughs> 25. 25. Yeah, you never ask a woman her age, so. But Debbie, for you, God's blessings for your health and for your loved ones. And as it is customary in our parish, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Debbie. Happy birthday to you. Stole